Ms. Greta Campbell? Here. Um, Ms. D'Alessandro has an excused absence this evening. Mr. Elliott? Here. Mr. Kreis? Randy Kreis? Uh, Mr. Mazurkowicz has a, an excused absence. Um, Joseph Mitchell? Here. Harlan Parrish? Here. Mr. Cole Peacock? Present. Uh, Mr. Repstorf? Here. Um, Jay Santos? Here. Mr. Schellenberger has an excused absence. Ms. Thea Sherman? Here. Mr. Steve Shimp? I'm here. And Mr. Chris Simino? Here. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for attending. The minutes were circulated last week. Uh, were there any comments with regarding the minutes? And if not, I'd entertain a motion. Harlan, thank you. Second was to my right, not quite sure who it was. Harlan and Chris. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, I'll now open things up for co public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to address the committee? Hearing none, we'll move on uh, into the updates portion of the agenda. And uh, I believe I'm first in line here. And I'd like to start by reminding everyone that the College World Series game tonight starts at 7 o'clock. <clears throat> and go Gators. I will do the best I can. Uh, yeah, it's go Gators tomorrow night, I think. Oh, that's right. Uh, uh, but anyway, in, in any event, you're on task. Um, just a couple things. Um, one, just to reiterate from our last meeting, and there was question, and just so we're all clear, there are no sales tax revenue funds being used for EN projects, and that does continue in case any of you have questions from the public. Just thought I'd let you know that, uh, that, that that is still very much in force. Um, <clears throat> next subject, and I'll, I'll um, kind of like a, a little bit of input, um, it's been mentioned that perhaps we might want to um, hold our meeting dates that they are and our meeting time is what it, where it is, but while we still have daylight, perhaps hold a committee meeting during the course of the year or two on site with projects that are being paid more by sales tax dollars. Uh, it would mean that you would have to you know, be going to a location that you may have not been before. It might change your driving patterns. Um, I'd kind of like some feedback. Um, great idea. Rather hold it as it is for convenience. I mean, talk to me. Nobody wants to talk about it. Maybe what we ought to do is have staff take a look at where that might be and which project and give us a proposal. Is anybody averse to doing that? I think as long as we have some advance notice just for planning purposes. People could yeah, work around it. I'm in Benita and depending on where it's at, travel time, I've got a meeting, I'm happy to do it as long as I have advance Probably notice. be interesting for our group. Yeah. One a year, try it. And, okay, Susan, is that enough feedback for you? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, next area is going to take a little longer than that last area. I'd like to talk to you about the presentation committee and um, e our new members may not be aware, but we, we have developed a presentation that would go out to uh, various community organizations to update them as to what is going on with sales tax revenue program funding projects restrictions, the whole thing, how our committee is functioning. Um, that presentation was developed by a subcommittee of this group. Uh, it's, it's, it is finalized and I think we, we basically have machine, machinated to, to the point where we're getting tired of doing it, making changes. We, we got a pretty good presentation. Um, it, it, and we're looking at rolling it out. We also discussed at that committee level to which organizations, and I'd like to give you basically a chairman's proposal as to how we would approach that. Um, the first presentation, if we followed what I recommend, would be to the school's foundation. The thinking is that those are community leaders already focused on our school system. Um, they're a relatively small group. And early on for our first presentation, candidly, I'd like some feedback on, okay, how'd you like it? And do you have any suggestions as we roll it out to the larger community? 
um, they, they likely, although I know a few of their members, they likely would be a friendly place to start um, and a constructive place to start. And I don't think they would hesitate to give us good quality feedback. So uh, from there, um, I'd like to do the Panhellenic Council and um, Fred and or Greta have volunteered to do that one. I would attend. Uh, again, smaller group. I think they'd give us good feedback. Have we missed anything that relates to your, your particular group? And from there to the Horizon Council, larger group, but again, pretty broad spread, uh, would not be seeking as much feedback. Um, I purposely um, then would recommend that we start to roll out to the service clubs, if you will. I would hope that by that time we have it pretty well refined as to the questions and the answers that we would receive along the way. Um, we'd find out if our presentation was interesting or not, or whether we ought to just bag it. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't be out, out in front with one group and to another. The thinking is that we would, we would try to, we'd start with the school's foundation on uh, September 15th um, and that anyone from this group who would like to attend that school's foundation meeting and hear the presentation, that would be well worth doing. Um, I think that's a public meeting. I'm not sure, is it, Harlan? Um, oh, well, we'd be welcome. I mean, you you guys wouldn't run us off, would you? No, no. Okay, right, good. So, <laughs> is that 50, is that the Friday? Is that the, the board when we yeah, it's, I think it, it is. Their meeting know, is the fourth Friday, and that is yep. September 15th. 7.30 a.m. And... Uh, no, we uh, actually, no. honestly, no, that, that August is the next, is the annual meeting. And so we meet every other month. So that's the, the executive committee meets in September. We're changing the guard. So Dr. Laboda, Michelle Laboda is current chair, but uh, Dr. Or, uh, Mike Wookish is taking over as chair and Noel Branding is vice chair. What would be the August. chances of having to have, have a full meeting in lieu of an executive committee meeting? Would that be breaking step with so no, many that, of them? That, I'm sure they'd probably do it for this. I mean, for this presentation, well, we, we certainly could do it. Irma, Irma's going to contact Marshall. Okay. And she's going to take the big club. I can. So uh, hopefully she'll I'll be, see him tomorrow evening. Yeah, if you're going to see him tomorrow, I'm going to be at Collegium tomorrow night. We, out of, we really would like to roll it out to right, them I'll first, and if we could have it be the full group, that would be exceptional. And you're shooting for September 15th. And That's what uh, you like to do? Okay. Yeah, and Irma, you've got Harlan out in front, so you know maybe you won't even need to use the big club. So. Um, and then from there, Irma's going to be in the lead on things and on the scheduling and the working with. Uh, Fred, you're active in the council, right? No, Penn. I'm close, I'm, but I'm not. Can you get Irma in touch? Yeah, Give her, or, or Greta, one or the other of you, if you would get to her the contact information and, and be the, the, the out, out lead for the, the contact, uh, we, I'd really like to see them be second. Uh, again, friendly group. We'd, we'd be talking to the community. It'd be worth doing. Uh, and then Horizon Council. Is there someone else who could work with Irma that's involved in Horizon Council? I'm an at-large member. You're an at-large member? Okay, great. Irma, you'll get, you got help there, too. So, cool. Um, and then after that, I'll, I'll ask, uh, as we move into the service clubs, that, that will likely be, our, our goal is to do one a month. So we're now out in the, we're probably out in the January time frame. So we have time to think about, um, have we modified it? Who's, who's going to be presenters and where do we go next? So uh, just so you all are aware. Um, does that sound okay on how to approach it? Anybody have a suggestion on how to improve the rollout? Sure. I've got one. Going once, going no, twice. I got one. Okay. I think maybe even before you do your first rollout, do one for the board. Uh, I, During I, a workshop or something my, like that. That's a real small group. And yeah, with all due respect, that's a public meeting, right? Yeah, it's taped. I'd like to roll it out to a smaller group in a non-public meeting so they can beat on us if we if they think it's not they the right look at product. Us. <laughs> no, I understand. No problem. I mean, I, 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 if it, unless you say before, the only other side of that armor, if the board has the board has seen the presentation, right, Susan? They've had it sent to them. Yeah. Uh, 
If there are, no, we okay, haven't seen it. We will, we will send it to the That's board good. in advance of the first presentation so that if you guys have content concerns, please raise them. But I'd rather not, and that will be sent to each board member with that in context. But it, if I could, I'd rather not roll it out at a public meeting yeah. for the first no, time. That, no, that's fine. I was just thinking we get asked all the time about the, the half cent sales tax. Right. How much are you, you know, the typical questions, how much are you spending on uh, Ian? And we say nothing, but, you know, I don't know if they all say nothing. Right. So hopefully they did. So hopefully if we so, send yeah. that to each of them, they can watch it and that'll answer the question. It was just for an information thing. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll see it there. I don't know if Marshall would be offended by Okay. Yeah. They're always rotating who gets a presentation All right. That would work too. Yeah, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be in consideration, they'd just be attending. And yeah. that's that's okay within Sunshine, right? Yes, yes, we're not they'll okay. have to be careful how they discuss issues with each other. So oh, yeah, we're, we're good at that. There's a question. Uh, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, it's been Friday. It's, it's Farmer, we're going to let you, you're chairman of the board. All right. You're, you're going to manage that problem? I, I will. No problem. Okay. Thank you. And Chris, you can double check me on this, but <clears throat> I believe that they can call executive sessions and have guests come to those that are not open to the public. Uh, no, that's really okay. limited by statute when we can do that. That's, okay. uh, yes. That really would get um, we have <laughs> we have had a number of people who after our last meeting stepped forward and said I'll be I'm willing to be a presenter that list has not been ignored um, you know I don't know who will be doing the third one of the Horizon Council I thought I'd grab the first one and and uh, we'll have Greta or Fred do the second and then the Horizon Council we'll see from there we've got some time to to work that through but. Um, yeah, you're still on. I, I still have the list, so you're not off the hook. Um, any other questions in that regard? Uh, it's designed to be a 15 minutes, and I would tell you that it might run as long as 20, depending on presenter. And we are going, we have not yet, but we are going to, in advance of uh, the first one, I'm going to brainstorm what might be questions that are asked and work with staff on getting true answers so we don't have to circulate rumors. And, um, and yeah, that's, that's the work that is to be done. But we do intend to open it up for questions at the tail end of it. Other questions or comments? Thanks. Um, Next piece on the agenda is the board member and uh, chairman persons. You're on. I have nothing to say. Uh, I really came tonight. I was just going to sit in, and then Kathleen Morgan could not come, so I'm yeah. covering for her. But it's very confusing. I'm just speaking for myself, but I, I imagine for the other board members too, to know what projects are. Funded. Now, when I got the agenda and I went in and read the past minutes and everything, that was very enlightening, but I don't normally get those. So I think maybe somehow getting that information to the board would be a, a good idea. I know we do. you do reports and it's available to us if we ask. But Susan, could we just on a monthly basis, or not on a monthly, but on a meeting by meeting basis, uh, send to the board the presentation that occurs at this meeting? Yes, and I, I also recommend that we send a little written um, executive summary along with it, sure. and I'll take Something care of that. Like that. Okay, perfect. Yeah, because that would that'd, yep. that'd fill the bill for you, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. It'd help you a lot. It, it would. It really would. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, let's, let's get into a practice of... Um, of sending them a copy of our of our slides and have a an executive summary prepared and maybe run it by me as chairman just to I don't can't give you a good reason but not have it be a totally staff product and then I'll respond to you and we can send that on to the board. Thank you. 
that could go under the chairman's name so that it's not a particular a particular staff member it's coming from the board right. that'd be good we thank can you do that uh, the other thing that's an excellent idea to go on site uh, this week I've been to two press conferences uh, one out at Riverdale and another one out at Fort Myers Beach this morning but just you know and I don't think either one of those are being funded by the half cent sales tax or at least not the majority of it but it was just being there is a very insightful thing so I think go to one of the sites that y'all are funding would be good. excellent good and that's all I have I have to make you all aware that when I joke with with armor I have to I have to apologize a little bit but I can't avoid it he taught my kids tennis so you know um, I've known him for a long time so if there's familiarity between us it's, it's uh, for a good reason he did a pretty good job actually all my son never got very far <laughs> Um, Irma, you're next on the agenda. Uh, communications Department, or Irma has some things to share with us. Yes, I do. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just a quick update on communications. I'll start off with what Mr. Person shared. We did have a press conference, or actually several press conferences over the last two weeks, but one of them was at Riverdale High School earlier this week where they started the renovations and expansions. Uh, we did create a video and took some photographs of that and that is available on the website. So I wanted to remind you that all of that information uh, that is covered communications wise is available there. Wanted to share our latest analytics, show a total view of 15,000 uh, viewers in the last six months with the top uh, page visited is capital versus operational followed by the main landing page and the sales tax dashboard is third. We also have updated the video content uh, and the media page as well. So anytime you're wondering what's out there, you can go there and it'll be up to date. Uh, we are working on developing some marketing materials. We call them one sheets for every single school so that they can be available at the school sites. Our goal is to have them available for open houses on August 8th. So that when families families come in, they can be handed a sheet of what exactly the sales tax has paid for at their specific site because you very well know that parents are, that is their main concern. Well, what is happening at my child's school? So we want to make sure that we have that information. So we will have those and those will also be shared with you as well. In case you get asked about a specific school, you can easily access that information. We are also updating the announcements that are shared during the, during the football games as well as the ads. If any of you attended any games last fall. You may have heard some of those announcements uh, during the breaks or in the stadium. In the stadium. So we want to make sure those are up to date at those locations as well. And I want to circle back to events that are funded by the sales tax, on events on projects funded by the sales tax that you will all be invited to and we hope that you will come. So we have our uh, ribbon cutting ceremony coming up on July 28th at Amanesed Elementary School. Those invitations went out today in the mail so you should be getting them in the next couple of days and they will also go out by email and we will be getting an RSVP list so just make sure you respond if you can attend. We will also be having a dedication ceremony at Lamel Teal Middle School on August 1st that uh, since it is an established campus as well it's being renovated as we speak to be branded with the new name and we're calling it a dedication because we will be dedicating the name and Mr. Teal's family will be present and they will also be part of the program and there will be a there's already a display in the works and there will be a huge plaque that will be unveiled during that ceremony uh, but we will also have materials available as well as during Mr. Restino's speech that will talk about what part of that school was funded by the sales tax. August 3rd we will have a press conference where we will have a demonstration on open gate uh, which are those weapons detection systems that we will begin rolling out in the fall. We have not established a location for that yet, but we do have a date because we are inviting our law enforcement officers to be there. So we wanted to make sure that date was reserved. And yes, Mr. Persons, I do believe that date is reserved on your calendar. So you will get that invitation as well. And you're invited to all of those events. You're not invited to speak unless you, know, you choose to, but really we just want you to be present we always introduce any ISOC members that are in attendance so that they know we continue to co you know, collaborate with you on these projects. Um, and other than the presentations that you already touched on, Mr. Shimp, if anyone has any questions, I'll take them. Otherwise, that is my update. 
I do have one question. Is sure. One sheet that you're developing are awesome. Is there any way that we can actually have them on the individual school's website? Well? Yep, that we will be doing that. Yes. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Irma, thank you. Thank you all. Uh, Frederick Ross, if you would come up. Frederick's going to report on uh, sales tax funded projects, uh, construction, and I think the technology, but I may not have that right. Frederick, the floor is yours. Take it over. All right. No, I'll tag out to let someone else do the technology part. Um, uh, uh, good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, Frederick Ross, Executive Director of Facilities Operations. Um, on behalf of uh, my division, we would like to thank you again for your support and, and your participation. Um, been hard at work, um, you know, managing not only these projects but also the hurricane-related repairs that are ongoing. Um, but want to report out on on some of the key activities. Uh, these are the projects here on, that are in the procurement phase. Um, we've been uh, leveraging our procurement department a lot in, in these times, and they've been uh, continuously uh, uh, producing for us. Um, here are several projects uh, like Cape High School re-roof. Um, these will be going to the board here either in June and July at our next upcoming board meetings uh, with the, the uh, ranking and approval for the RFQs that have been going forward either in construction management, architecture, or building official, maybe engineering, depending on if it's an HVAC related project, um, but also Fort Myers High School re roof. Um, they've um, wrapped up those uh, RFQs and those will be going. Lehigh Senior uh, re roof and also South Fort Myers re roof. On that one particular, the phase one uh, budget uh, will be ready to go for the board for phase one approval to begin the design services. Uh, so those are the projects currently in the procurement phase. Any questions on those? Okay, on the next slide <clears throat> uh, will be those in our design phase, usually in the hands of, a, again, an engineer or an architect um, designing the project. Uh, the first one, Bonita Springs Elementary, is one that's been somewhat of a, fo a focus of ours uh, here recently, um, uh, and a, a historic uh, building. Uh, those two, first two buildings, I want to believe, were both built in the 1920s, so a lot of age on those, and we are looking, there was already um, a pro project there going on. We're looking to expand the scope of that project. Right now, we actually have our architect using a, a structural engineer to do some structural analysis of, of those buildings to ensure um, uh, and, and see what needs to be in actually in that additional scope to make sure those buildings are safe and secure. Um, some of the other um, additions to the scope we're looking to do for our lighting and flooring, um, painting, looking to do some uh, different uh, playground setup to you know, uh, provide a little more safety uh, for the students there on the playground. So really, Bonita Springs Elementary um, will come back hopefully next time with some more information out after those analyses are done, but one school that's our area of focus for us to, to make sure we um, keep up keep up the par. Um, our maintenance department has jumped in on this school and just about every single trade um, has spent a couple um, weeks at this school uh, really trying to refresh the school and get it ready. Um, also, in the design phase, you'll see Riverdale High School. Even though it is currently under construction, there is an additional phase that will be coming, and that phase is uh, currently in the design. That's for the <coughs> excuse me, the existing campus uh, interior renovation and, and some of the programs. So, um, a, a more design continuing to go on with Riverdale as the uh, previous phase, our current phase, is being constructed. Any anyone, any questions on the design phase? Mm -hmm. On your design phase uh, budgeted values, is that the value for the design phase, not for the project? Correct. Just for the design phase? Correct. That's what you're going to spend. That's the way it looks, yes. That's correct, because Riverdale is, is significantly more than that. Exactly. Yes. <clears throat> so yes, that is the, the design cost as we know them now. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on the design? All right, and then final those on, on the construction. You'll see several of our um, plumbing projects underway. Um, and then that uh, project there for Fort Myers Tech uh, College renovation. Uh, that includes expansion of marine lab, smaller plants lab, welding lab, and also a, a roofing replacement. Um, missing from this slide, um, we can make sure we make that correction and, and maybe get that to the to the committee. Um, Franklin Park Elementary uh, on Montessori that we um, just mentioned that is actually wrapping up, uh, so due to be open this summer. Um, and then also Riverdale would also be on here as well as, as that construction has started. So we'll, we'll get it updated with those three projects as well. Yes, ma'am. 
So Brenda Park is in the construction phase. Um, do we have an anticipation? Yes, um, I believe we talked about this last time. We forwarded that to, and hopefully the committee got that. I got that. Okay. But I did not get a, I don't remember seeing a substantial, yes, and thank you so very much for that. Mm -hmm. I don't remember seeing a substantial completion date. Okay. We'll update that and make sure we get that date on there for you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? I know they had a moment of silence for all the trees that were taken out of <laughs> Our pool has no shape. Okay. <laughs> but it's much needed. Other questions? Frederick, is that all you have? No, nope, I'll be back, but uh, I think somebody else will come for this. You're rotating. Yes. <laughs> You're working with uh, Dwayne Altman. Dwayne, the floor is yours. Okay, so uh, the security technology upgrades, to remind everybody what those are, that's everything related to surveillance, access control, and alarm systems and that. So we have uh, 17 projects that uh, will be completed by the end of the quarter uh, with those. We've rounded out some of those projects already, so some of them have, some, some of those initiatives have been completed, so you're gonna see fewer and fewer each quarter as we move forward because now we're on to just um, of the five major initiatives within there we're down to three so that'll start uh, to reduce over time the interactive technology upgrades that's the um, Promethean panels the interactive technology panels audio enhancement systems that so we completed seven of those um, schools this quarter we have uh, a few more that are a little bit behind and we'll finish out probably in another month because we were just pushed on supply chain uh, but those are coming to conclusion and then the big expenditures you'll see is the computer refresh program uh, if you recall we order the devices earlier in the year so uh, during the previous year we ordered them in November this year we ordered them in January those don't get delivered until June so all of that stuff is now expensing out this quarter um, it showed as encumbrances for probably two or three quarters and now it'll finally expense out so you should see that by the end of uh, June and that's uh questions I have two my curiosities mm -hmm. your supply chain issues were pretty large six months ago is that settling out so in some areas it's settling out and others it's not. So we have um, some of our security products. Uh, it has improved quite a bit. Um, we were having issues with uh, you know power panels for access control and things like that where we could get the majority of the components for the project, but you know, we had right. something small holding us holding us back. Most of those have, have worked out. The Promethean panels are the ones that uh, have been a little bit more challenging. Also because we moved some, um, some scheduling around on the projects for example because we were reopening sanibel back in february we moved them up because they were scheduled to be done um, back around the time that the storm hit and we didn't want to reopen them with the older equipment so we went ahead and, and shuffled our schedule around so we um, but the majority of it is basically the panels themselves uh, are still on a long lead time and uh, that's about it on these projects that are on a long lead time right now and the weapons detection system, is that in place or on order? Where are we in the implementation? Um, so Dave would actually, unless Susan knows by any chance, because th those orders are coming uh, through Dave Newland's shop, but uh, do you know if that's been encumbered yet, the weapons detection? I know at our last meeting, at our last meeting it was reported that we that the district was moving forward with that, but I just was curious as to when, when it was coming. Yeah. So from my understanding is they they were on order already, so we placed the orders and they're gonna pilot it at um, some schools to start with instead of doing all schools at once. We're gonna do a small pilot at some of the schools. So it is, they are ordered and on their way. You may all recall that that system has, was to detect weapons and that we'd had some trial runs in the schools and the students have been really positive about it. So it'll be neat to get it in place. Other questions? All right. Thank you. Um, thank you. Frederick, I think you're back on, man. Yes, I'm back on. 
Um, this is for our maintenance department. This is um, a kind of a one slide just summarizes all the uh, maintenance related projects that they continue to have going for sales tax funded uh, projects. Um, to note this it has been updated since the slides that went out to you earlier. Um, so this is an updated slide and we'll make sure we get this out as well. Wanted to make sure we only um, were reporting sales tax related projects. Um, so some highlights on here, some pavement resurfacing and restriping of tennis courts and basketball courts at Fort Myers Middle School. Um, uh, the chiller upgrades, these are all, you know, uh, updating existing equipment that has reached its life expectancy. So we're, you know, working on our getting uh, upgraded chillers and, and new equipment in there. Um, on the door upgrades, several schools, Tice Elementary, Gulf Middle School, Benita Middle School, Cape High School, these were areas where the door frames uh, were in poor condition, had many rusts that could no longer be corrected. Um, the new doors were aluminum framing with hurricane impact glass, so you know, upgrading those those doors. Um, on those several paint projects, Estero High School, Tice Elementary School are, are fully um, full exterior of paint jobs um, and then some walkway covers at several schools, Diplomat Elementary and Trafalgar Middle. These help facilitate the um, extension of the sidewalk and cover for the drop off area so the, the students aren't um, getting wet in, in the, the rain that we seem to have a lot in the afternoon. So um, some of the maintenance related projects that uh, our maintenance departments are, are working on. Questions? Mm -hmm. Frederick, uh, are we working our way through the Irma comp uh, or EN complications? Is that coming to a close and we're now getting back on program? We had to postpone some sales tax projects and Correct. No, not at all. Not at all. We're still, we still have a lot of hurricane work still ongoing. Yep. Um, a lot of roofs, uh, you know, a lot of other, other um, projects ongoing with the hurricane. Um, obviously, we talked about uh, being out at Fort Myers Beach Elementary um, this week with the demolition uh, getting done, um, things getting um, prepared for, you know, Hector Caporetta. We're still in the uh, portable campus, but for example, they were able to get that portable campus off the uh, generators and on the permanent power now. So we're not paying that that fuel and generator bill on, on those on that campus. So still a lot of hurricane work um, that, that we're, we're working on. For the committee purposes, um, you know, Ian, Ian was a huge distraction in terms of the normal progression of projects. I asked the question in a kind of our pre-meeting to this meeting. We've, we've rescheduled things, but we've not taken any off, off the list because our funding has worked out fairly well. But we're, um, if, if somebody were to judge, are the sales tax projects coming online as quickly as we set out to? No, of course not, because Ian has distracted resources, including your department. I mean, it had to impact you guys big time. Yes, definitely. Our, both our, our maintenance and construction project uh, departments are working on hurricane related items. Um, we do have an external consultant um, that come in for program management to assist to try to somewhat alleviate some of the, the load, but even still, they still have to manage manage that team as well and, and manage the vendors out there doing the work. Thank you. Other questions? Yeah, that's our question there. Uh, two words that I've heard way too much in the last couple of months are resiliency and hardening. Are you taking any of these opportunities to use sales tax dollars to make harden our schools in terms of you you mentioned the hurricane impact glass on the door anything else that you're doing with our dollars which would be appropriate to improve maintenance to harden our schools for future storms yes yes i think that those doors were an example of that you know when we were when it's time to do those doors we're not only just redoing them with the same thing we're looking to upgrade hurricane proof um, um type materials and, and activities to to upgrade so yes in addition um you know we are uh outside of sales tax, re reaching out and, and working on um, grants in that area um, that will, will help support in that area as well. And definitely even even in the hurricane repairs, um, yes, we're um, taking that opportunity to uh, not only you know replace that roof with the same roof, we're looking to upgrade and, and, and maximize the protection for the next hurricane that will come. Is, is any of our sales tax dollars, and again, I don't think that this would be inappropriate, but I don't know being used to focus on schools that are particularly used as shelters in an emergency? So there are, have, there are schools, yes, that where um, 
that are shelter related schools that projects are um, related to sales tax are ongoing um, and I would have to look into more of the details and the specifics of those to see you know what hardening activities were done but yes the, um, there are shelter schools that that we were spending sales, sales tax dollars on um, for renovations so but I can if you, if you want more details on if we're no, I'm just mm -hmm. saying, just thinking maybe we should make a recommendation that if we're going to do these it be focused on those that make those schools harder hardening those schools that are particularly either vulnerable or are used as shelters as we enter a hurricane season yes if, if the committee gave that recommendation we would we would take that for that really typically would fall into the under the perusal of the capital projects committee and that process that runs through um, staff staff to the superintendent to the construction advisory committee and those committees that then make the project list recommendation to the board outside of our perusal and, and to that point we're actually in that process right now of, of kind of wrapping up our new and our update to our capital plan and maybe after that's updated and, and we can share that with you and, and maybe specify some of the um, shelter schools and, and what projects we're, we're recommending for, the, for those areas and we can share that information that way. I'm on the long-term recovery task force and that's one of our high priorities. Of course that's we got to do a whole plan. We have to submit it to uh, HUD and everything else. But uh, we're looking into that also for hardening all the shelters because that is a community need, not just a school need. Right. And hopefully we'll get some funding for that too. I just didn't want us to think like we can't use sales tax dollars to harden the schools through our maintenance or construction. No, that, that would that would fall into the capital projects category. I don't think there's any question about that. Yeah, and in terms of the shared community use, there there has been uh, projects in partnership with the county, uh, generator upgrades at some of these shelter schools. So yes, our our partners do assist in that. I do have one question. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have, I see like the list of projects, do we have like either a number of schools that are being touched by this or a percentage of the schools that are being touched by this? Yes, we, we could get that for you. Mm -hmm. Number and percentages of, of schools that these maintenance related projects touch, yes. So mm -hmm. on the hardening side of things, not, not the weather side, but mm -hmm. the security hardening. So when you're doing doors and windows and impact doors, and does that fall into the security hardening as well? That doesn't, but um, we are, when that happens, we're kind of upgrading with the full technology of, of what we're currently doing and what is the standard across the district. So, yes, when, when all of those, and then obviously even with, with building code, um, you know, once you hit 51% of, of either repairs or square footage or dollar amount, you know, you kick into upgrading um, things that are, are ready to build in code as well. So, um, yes, definitely um, we encourage and we do give that direction to our architects as they're designing to you know look for those opportunities to um, do that cool uh, and staff could correct me if I'm wrong but I believe that the projects on existing schools where we have secured lobbies limited ingress paths provided fencing routed traffic those sorts of things that are focused on uh, they are capital projects but focused on security measures have fallen into a bucket that's in the security, safety, and technology part of the four areas our money can be spent on. Mm -hmm. And that those are separately accounted for. I think they actually, th those numbers are kept separate. I'd also like to say that we discuss this in the shade because we don't want a lot of people knowing what security efforts we're actually taking. But the board has had several meetings along those lines. So it's definitely not being overlooked. Oh, no, I don't, I don't have you any know. question about that. I just know there's now requirements to do things that have been passed out on the federal and state level. We got a hard certain ingress and egress and windows and screens and all those things. I was just, We're trying to go above and beyond that. I'm sure Safety's number one. I'm sure and for, for those on the committee uh, that are new, it's probably been a about 15 months ago, we continued to ask questions about the safety and security projects, and we really couldn't hear a lot of the specifics. So what we requested as, as our committee was that the safety and security people uh, meet with the chair, yours truly, 
provide the detail on a confidential basis on those projects and I could report back whether in my opinion they fell within the perusal and what the voters voted for. That process happened and the weapons uh, detection system that with that meeting was an update of that process so that process is ongoing as staff believes they have significant projects that could be a flag they contact me. Okay. So. Other questions? Thank you. Right, thank you. Frederick, you, you survived another one. I did. Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt Acosta is going to make the presentation on the financial, the budget, and the revenue forecast. All right, good evening, everyone. Just to go back to the previous question that you had, uh, we did verify that 100% of the schools have received have benefited from sales tax funds. If you go on the website, you can actually go by school by school and see how much was spent on cap on maintenance, safety, technology. So we do have those numbers, and we can provide those as well. I just thought it was important to know, like, out of the however many properties we have, what percentage of our schools are being touched by this sales tax, so that we can show that it's being distributed district-wide. Yeah, the, right. answer to that, yeah. the answer to that so, is everyone has been touched so far. Sure, but... And there's a listing on the website of the projects that, yeah. yeah that's correct. It's, it's been district-wide. Yep. So the first slide is our total estimated capital revenue for FY23. Uh, this hasn't changed from our previous presentation, so sales tax is 31% of the capital revenue that's estimated at $108 million. And this is all new revenue and does not include fund balance. Next slide, please. Uh, this next slide is the FY23 sales tax budget, uh, including uh, carryover from the previous year. Of and so the total budget is $205 million. Of that, the largest portion is construction at 39% or $78 million. And the construction includes debt service for new schools. So next is our monthly sales tax collections uh, year over year. So we're looking at FY22 and FY23. And you'll notice that we are starting to get closer uh, between years. So even this last uh, April, uh, we're, we're about 2% over what we had for the previous year. So we're, we're getting pretty close as far as estimating where we're um, supposed to be. I know in previous years we've been very conservative, uh, but we're actually looking like we're catching up here. We're still waiting for May and June, uh, as well as the June uh, quarterly discretionary payment. This next slide is the sales tax revenue. Uh, so we show from inception to date, uh, as well as uh, FY22, and then where we currently are budgeted to actuals for FY23. So for inception, uh, so far we budgeted $376 million, uh, but we've accrued $418 million, or 11.3 above what we budgeted uh, to date. Uh, for FY23, we've budgeted today uh, $89 million, and we've received 98 uh, or about 10% above what we've budgeted. Okay. And then this last slide is our uh, revenue tracking. So I said we have about two more months and one discretionary left. Uh, so far we've um, received 98 million. Uh, looking at what we are budgeted and kind of projecting maybe a little more growth from there, my thought is we'll probably end up around 118 to 120 million uh, received for this year, uh, which would be about nine to 11 percent above what we projected. So a little closer than the 29 percent above we've done previously. We've kind of narrowed that a bit. Uh, for FY24, uh, we've added about five percent growth uh, to be at 126 million or 6.5 million for the next year. Any questions? Question? Man, if you could just 
I know you've gone over this before, but the discretionary, just explain the discretionary in June. I know uh, the additional that we get. So it's, it's basically just a true up. Um, That's right. Yeah. That's right. I mean, thank you. Other questions? I would just share with you that the revenues have been coming in a larger amount, so have the costs. You know, the industry is, in the capital improvements area, costs have gone up. So that although we're seeing larger dollar amounts than we anticipated, we've all, you know, the, the folks managing those projects have had to work hard to maintain, maintain them within budget. So, so far, we've not had to step back any of the planned capital. We've not had to step back any of the cap planned capital projects for financial reasons due to inflation yet, though, because our revenues have kind of matched up. Isn't that true, Matt? That we haven't had to step back on. We had to step back on any any planned capital projects because of lack of funds flowing. Different expert. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have not had to step back on any of the projects that we had planned. Um, each year, of course, we relook at everything and realign based on our growth that's happening and stuff like that. And so plans could change because of growth. If we have to add a school that we weren't um, projecting before, we have to build that in. So something could change, but not because of funding at this point. Thank you. Uh -huh. Any other questions for Matt? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next portion of the agenda moves us into motions and votes. And in the past, we've had we've done this in a separate motions. One motion to approve the the financials as reported, and then the other uh, motion to approve the projects as falling within the requirements of the sales tax. And I would entertain motions with regard to either in either order. Move for approval. Financials. Of the financials. Okay. Is there a second on that? Cole Peacock seconded. Harlan first. That was on the financials. Any any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you. I'd entertain a motion with regard to the project falling within the boundaries of the, the what was voted in by the voters. So moved. Thank you, Fred. Second. Thank you, Harlan. We're doing pretty well here, team. <laughs> but all in, fa all in favor, please well, signify by a, saying uh, aye. Comment. Greta, thank you. Yes, I would like to uh, request that Franklin Park be added to the project list. He said it was inadvertently left off up on the construction phase. We make sure that happens, Frederick. That it is. I think it's a preschool. Tony Okay. Okay. So are we approving what we what was presented or are we approving, approving with the verbal? We would be approving what was presented as projects in that they fall within the boundaries of okay. what was approved okay. by the voters. Okay. We didn't see any projects that in our opinion fall outside the requirements of the four areas of expenditure. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, I'd open it up for member comments, and I'd like to start with on staff. Thank you very much for having the presentations being up here. For a half-deaf guy that wears hearing aids, your chairman really appreciates it. <laughs> Thank you. Any other member comments? Sure. Yeah. Um, I had the opportunity earlier today to tour the Pace Center for Girls, which is a remarkable facility, which I believe has about 60 or 70 young women who ordinarily would be in our school, our school system, but are uh, at Pace. And when I asked them, uh, are they part of the school district or not part of the school district? Do they benefit from the half penny sales tax or not? I think there was some lack of clarity on their part. They haven't benefited from the half penny sales tax. Would a partner school like that have any opportunity to participate in this? Are they part of the school district or are they not part of the school district? So they are a contracted site. So we contract um, services from them. As it stands right now, just like a charter school, they were not part of the um, 
information that went out to the voters of Lee County for the sales tax. Mm -hmm. Other questions or comments? Everybody doing okay with how we're doing? Is the content what you're looking for? Or at least fill in the bill? Thank you. I'd entertain another motion. To adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. We're gone. Second. Thank you. Second. Our next meeting is September 21st at 6 p.m. And the one following that is December 7th at 6 o'clock. Thank you. Nice efficient meeting, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Pardon me? Yeah. Nice efficient meeting.